So the commemoration of the Battle of Isandwana is currently underway following attempts to prevent Prince Misi Zulu from speaking as king this morning. The event commemorates the nation's 1879 defeat of the British Army at the Ngotu battlefields. Isandwana is also remembered across the country in the form of art and culture. Award-winning vocalist, songwriter and academic Mbuso Koza is one of the performers and he's got his own memorial lecture. He joins us to tell us about the significance of the Battle of Isangran. Mkati in Sabwan. <laughs> Thank you very much for joining us. So as we commemorate the Battle of Isandwana, um, there are some legal battles that are playing themselves out on the sidelines yes. um, in the Zulu Kingdom. What do you make of those developments firstly? As an artist, it's difficult for me to comment on that because it's a family matter in as much as it's a, a, of a national interest. I think there are relevant people, historians. I'm not a historian. I'm just an artist who loves his heritage. I think let us let the process of this dispute to take its cause until we see proper results. I think it's better because it's very sensitive. Mm. Yes. The Battle of Isandwana 143 years yes. ago, what was it about? And would you say that that battle, when you assess the state of South Africa today, um, has bled on? to what we see today in our society? Uh, I think when we are uh, re-looking at such uh, uh, memorable uh, events, it's about learning from them and see how we can move forward. But as of to say maybe we won, uh, I don't think we can go there because we have nothing as black people, as Africans. You ask yourself, show me one city or town that was architectured by us. So now when we speak of the Battle of Isandlona, we should try to look at means on how we can move forward and see ourselves building new uh, maybe towns as legacies of Africans. Mm -hmm. Because we need to live beyond animal skins. We need to live beyond backwardness. What our forefathers did for us should serve as an inheritance, a heritage, and we commemorate, commemorate it. Hey, English. <laughs> but the point is, what is the distinction between history and culture and heritage? If history is a recorder of events, then it means it, it, is, it gives birth to culture. And then when those cultures can't be practiced, then they serve as a heritage. Now, when we look at the Battle of Isandlan, many people think maybe we're going to talk about who stepped, who, uh, what spears, uh, I mean spears were used. But I think we should be talking about influencing the educational system now. And I'm looking forward to a day when a young child, in order for him or her to get proper marks, and maybe mention even the, the names of the places where they come from because there is a study called onomastics, the names of the society. So our culture and heritage goes beyond uh, singing and dancing. It requires, it requires us to think deeper. It requires us to think deeper. When we look at the leadership that led the Battle of Isandwana, mm. what are some of the lessons that we can draw from that leadership when you talk about moving forward? I think it's a unity of purpose and the clarity. You know, another thing that you can learn from a battlefield is not to take things personal. And you look at this leadership of old people uh, walking barefooted from Undi, like we took a walk last week. Uh, commemorating that and you ask yourself if the leader of that battle was King Mahole because at the age of between 74 and 76 eight kilometers apart he would move to this point to that point directing the entire 20,000 regiments and now you look at uh, the sacrifices the selflessness where people are ready to die for the, the future of their kids uh, because it is said that even the women of their time, when they were moving now uh, to, to Isandwana, they would maybe wear their Zulu traditional state in reverse as a sign of saying we are ready to become widows. Because we know that you are going to fight for the future of, of your kids. You ask a normal man on the streets, Emma Kai, do we have men 
who look at our kids as maybe these small uh, e tombo that needs to be sprinkled so that they grow knowing who they are of course no one can never know who they are because a knife can't cut itself but at least the things that influences you as an african you ask yourself what are the assumptions when you're waking up in the morning what are your arguments apart from complaining about job opportunities for me this is what we should be talking about if we're looking at these battles. And other battles, of course, King Mshweshwe fought with uh, the British armies. We need to talk about that. We need to put it at the forefront. And I'm expecting Sutu people to collaborate, and we do things more for our heritage, not just a single cultured uh, initiative. <clears throat> I beg your pardon. The yes. Afrocentric view and the Eurocentric view um, yes. has married itself very well um, mm. in South Africa. So, yes. from what I'm hearing from you, you speak of a reawakening almost of, of, of a people. Um, where do you begin with that reawakening, Leon Vosele? I think there is a confusion, though, with the reawakening of the people. Because when you say you don't know yourself and you quickly think of your invunulo, your animal skin, you think of your surname, you think of it, but that's not who you are. It's what those people who came before you left for you. You have mind, you have your metaphysic, you have your neurons in your head. There's a lot that you can do to change the world. Of course, drawing inspiration from your histories, from your culture, but in as much as we are a product of our history, but we, never, we should never allow to be prisoners of it being uh, cornered toward those who came before us. We should do it like this. But the problem, if we should do it like then, uh, can we fight with the British armies today with our animal skins? They have evolved. We haven't. When you say we haven't evolved, what do you mean? I'm asking myself, would you today, you go to the Petra of Isandana, it's still the same? Uh, at the mountain, you look at the museum, we should be seeing far better things about our culture. It's for me, museology is an instrument to safeguard these, uh, I mean, uh, heritages, intangible, intangible. It's, it's like, it's about collecting these artifacts and then you decorate with them, but how do you instrumentize your own culture and turn it into a subject of a daily consumption apart from these commemorations? Who, who are we in the end? And another thing, maybe, as I'm presenting the Petra of and a lecture tonight at the Joburg Theatre, we need to look at ourselves deeply and have a higher view of who we are in terms of stopping complaining about white people. Because the more you complain about your enemy, you'll never get I mean, where you're going because you're busy looking uh, around you and you have no focus whatsoever. And this kills you inwardly because part of the game of growing as human is to forget about those events that keep eating away of you. But if we say, or oh, maybe they say June 16 is coming, and then white people did this, no, we should say, some of us made mistakes because there is no unfair opponent on the battlefield. So that we are supremely rational and emotionally balanced when we are attending to these issues. But if we're still crying, we'll never get anywhere. Hmm. With the lecture that you were giving, you yes. will be giving rather for the battle um, of Isandwana. Your yes. biggest takeaway, um, because whenever you do the lectures, you represent other cultures as well. Yes. You make it clear that this is not just about the Amazulu nation and yes. winning in this battle. So in keeping with that theme of moving forward and building and progressing mm. uh, and seeing what it is that your contribution is rather, you know, in, 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 in modern day society. Yes. Uh, what is the main takeaway? My theme this year, E.T., Africa, you have to survive. And I'm challenging Africans this year. I am saying um, we, we are so caught up with, with, with these uh, I mean, mythologies and, uh, and legends that if you have, have problems, you need to go and consult Isangoma, you put money first, and then they help you. You go to a pastor, you put money. And so. I'm asking myself if we were to sit down and, and analyze who we are scientifically because 
if you were to analyze something, you look at an apple, you take a knife, you cut it inside and say, what is inside? Do you, do you know what is inside you as an African? Do you know the power that is inside you as an African? What DNA, what did you inherit from your forefathers, those who fought these battles? It means you can fight today's battles with that kind of I mean, uh, inspiration, but if you do not know about those who came before you, you will never get anywhere. So scientists, they just cut the apple, they look at what is inside, and then two with maybe pieces, and then they cut it further until you cut cut it anymore. Ah, but in the am atoms. Ah, an, tom, cuttable. That is uncuttable. So you need to strip yourself to an extent where you can't be cut. But every day we are so sensitive. Anything is, you know, we can't think as Africans. So now we need to look at things scientifically. Who am I at its core when I wake up in the morning? Later in the day, do you sit down and evaluate your day? Who did you offer and what can you do better on the next day? You just wake up or because you bent in paper, you went to church, things are going to be fine. No, it needs you as an African. All these intangible and uh, um, intangible heritages that we lost, they can come back if we work hard, not just complaining. Oh, why people did that? Why people did that? But what are you doing now in the modern day? Because you're in power. So these are uncomfortable questions when we talk about the Battle of Isandana that we need to address because we love our government. We voted for our government. Therefore, we have a right to smash her if she does not listen to us. And she needs to protect us so that we can criticize her for the well-being of her existence. What did it take for you to get to the point that you are at right now? I can sense um, a mm. sense of maybe not frustration, but mm -hmm. like you're yeah, just yeah, like, yeah. okay, yes, yes, you know, yes. so it's like it's desperate, man. Mm, uh, mm, what mm. did it take for you to get to that point? Um, I think it was inspiration from my forefathers. Uskonya Nekoza uh, was a friend of King Sanzanga Kona. Uh, when King Sanzanga Kona um, passed away, uh, he joined uh, his father, King Shaga. He fought some battles. And then at, at a little stage, he got a land at home. So when I was growing up, I was taught this, about these things. So I started my career in music. But I was observing everyone is trying to do what Americans are doing. We have no time to analyze who we are, meaning we have these rich experiences that we do not reflect deep on. Then I, I began to research Amahubo, uh, family songs or clan songs. And what I discovered in that music is that there are studies about linguistic segments. Um, there are maybe dialects that can't be used now, but you can still find on, in Amahubo. And then you can write a thesis even on one song that is from that era. So I was looking again at the missionary influence after the Battle of Isandlana and other battles like the Battle of Val, um, the hymnody, uh, I mean, uh, how great the world, how great the world, from it's a completely uh, like different world uh, from what we used to be and what we're doing now. For me, I really find it masochistic. E even though this thing came in a form of religion, I still find it evil that you can really erase people's memories like that in the name of we'll go to heaven one day. Give us the proof, then, then we can lose who we are. Because everything needs to be demonstrated. No one can argue with a demonstrated fact. But if we're still talking, no, no, no. no. We need to think and act. And your thoughts need to amount to action, and your action must amount to knowledge. So that's where I'm at as an artist, as I will be presenting this lecture tonight. And I don't think we should allow Indo-Zotribalism to have place in things like this. This is why uh, I have songs from Congo, Amahubo, Ose Congo. 
I have songs even from Swati, Swazini, uh, from Zimbabwe when um King Uban um Zilgas Gamachoban Eshonale Wabula Wai. When they were migrating, they used to compose songs and they used to develop new languages. And we need to talk about that one day. That language does not develop from ethnicity. If we're sitting like this, we can't change anything. But the more we move, we get inspiration and then we develop new dialects. And as it stands, we, we, we're, staying to get, we, we're staying the same now. I'm worried about even the COVID. People are saying, oh, covert. But they are ascribing more value to the dialects of English. <laughs> <laughs> so there's plenty that people can look forward to from your lecture series yes. tonight at the Joburg Theatre on the Battle of Isandan. Nkatini, thank you very much for coming through uh, this afternoon. Uh,